Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. A very well welcome from our side. My name is Andy Knobloch, and I had uh, Global Alliances in the public segment of Philips Lighting. Uh, today, we want to talk about a topic that we're at Philips Lighting are extremely passionate about. Uh, it is about smart cities and the role of connected lighting in empowering cities to become smarter. And very importantly, also the importance of openness and partnering and ecosystems in creating these smart cities. And I'm very excited to introduce Marlin Zalkowitz, the Global Director for IoT and Future Cities in the public sector of SAP, who will talk about the SAP perspective on this topic and uh, also have a few polling questions uh, for you. I will start out uh, with a short presentation on the Philips Lighting perspective, and then I will hand over to Marlin to talk about the SAP and, and broader perspective and, and how we are partnering. And uh, uh, like uh, just mentioned, we will have some time for Q&A at the end of the, the webcast. So smart, smarter cities uh, represent a really unprecedented opportunities for cities, citizens, and, and businesses alike. And uh, smart cities will enable uh, cities and, and uh, to buy, become much more resource efficient and improve operation performance. And at the same time, and very importantly, uh, provide seamless and better services to citizens to create more live, livable uh, spaces in cities. And it's a huge opportunity in terms of numbers. Uh, analysts from Foss and Sullivan, for example, forecast smart cities to create opportunities of $3.3 trillion by 2025. And despite these staggering numbers, uh, we're seeing that cities are also complex and they're diverse and citizens uh, don't want technology pushed, but they, they want to see the benefits, they want to see better services. and. We, uh, as Philips Lighting, obviously see connected lighting as one of the key applications for creating smarter cities and a fantastic vertical to start. When we talk about our vision uh, at Philips Lighting about how will smart cities evolve. So the first one for us, which is lighting specific, obviously, is uh, really the right light. Uh, can we provide night light exactly when and where it is needed? Uh, can we provide high quality light? Uh, that is, is one of the key things that, that citizens care about. Uh, at the same time, we're talking about connected operations. So connected lighting enables uh, lighting departments and cities to become much more efficient, energy efficient, as well as operationally efficient, and, uh, and they improve their costs and, and uh, improve the, the benefits for their citizens. And the third one is that there will be many, many applications uh, in the smarter city. And the needs of, of customers to be able to evolve over time as these applications become more concrete. And uh, we, we need to enable these evolving applications by providing openness and scalability to our city customers. The beauty of, of public lighting is that, that it is truly everywhere. We have 300 million street lights uh, in the world. And uh, there's a great need to upgrade that with an infrastructure that's uh, in general more than 20 years old and accounts for a huge portion of a city's total energy consumption and budget. And at the same time, uh, right now, the installed base of connected street lighting is, is only roughly about 2%. And we expect that to grow rapidly over the next 10 years. So it's a it's a beautiful asset to to as a starting point for for uh, smart city uh, topics. We we see it as as one of the key applications because we have a clear business case based on on energy savings, and uh, and it's a strong vertical to get started into smart cities without having to roll out expensive infrastructure to start with. And by leveraging connected lighting, we can create many, many benefits for for our uh, customers in, in, when it's around energy savings, which is one of the big triggers that we can save 50 to 70% just by converting to LEDs 
and up to 80% when you couple the energy savings uh, with smart controls to enable uh, uh, better dimming and, and to avoid uh, day burners. So there's a lot of um, uh, energy saving benefits. At the same time, you also get a lot of operational benefits and you, you are able to provide a, a better service to citizens by, for example, identifying faults as and when, when they occur. And we're really seeing connected operations taking off. And uh, you know, it's connected street lighting, uh, like I mentioned before, it's 2% right now. Uh, it's expected to grow dramatically. And we're seeing an uptake in many cities across the world. And it's the mega cities, uh, like Los Angeles or Buenos Aires. But at the same time, it's also many smaller cities that are looking at rollouts. And uh, we have a couple of examples here, like in, in Italy, you know, where we just have uh, smaller cities that are also able financially as well as technologically to uh, get to connected uh, lighting without having to invest massively into infrastructure and, and capabilities first. And so it's really an opportunity that, that is uh, taking off rapidly and is also seen by many analysts as uh, one of the uh, starting applications for smart cities. And lucky for us in the, to work in this industry, uh, the lighting is really not just about technology platforms and energy savings, but it's also a very visible um, uh, asset with emotional benefits that provides a sense of safety and we're seeing more and more convergence of traditional functional lighting with, with architectural lighting, enabling citizens to experience their city in a really new light. So lighting and connected lighting in particular is really at the crossroads of emotional and, and technical benefits, um, which makes it quite unique, we think. I want to give you a short example of uh, how uh, connected lighting can improve not just uh, the lighting in itself, but as one of the evolving applications, we need to think about how can we link other departments, how can we link uh, different users uh, in a city to benefit from connected lighting. And one of the great use cases uh, that we uh, have implemented is uh, looking at how can connected street lighting be made available to emergency and law enforcement departments in cities uh, that have very different needs. But in the event of an, of an emergency, uh, they can have access to the lighting control and they can light up the city, for example, if a fight breaks out or if an accident happens and they can have control for a particular street. Uh, without having to understand the complexity of lighting, they don't need to see dimming schedules, they don't need to see assets or energy information, they just want a, a very simplified user interface with, with group light points where they can just switch on, switch off uh, when, when an emergency occurs. And this is something that we can enable with connected lighting to improve the collaboration between lighting departments, operation departments and cities, and, and safety and security departments. And uh, they can benefit from the connected lighting infrastructure without having to become lighting experts. And at the end of the, the emergency, it just goes back into the, the normal connected lighting mode. And therefore, uh, the, the law enforcement people don't need to think about what happens to lighting that will uh, remain in, in the realm of the lighting department. But lighting is also uh, just one of, of many applications in smart cities. And uh, th there are very many different ways uh, of, of connecting uh, smart assets. And we're looking into openness uh, to enable cities at different levels to uh, to become really a smart city. So it's not about just connected lighting or, for example, uh, video security uh, or smart traffic solutions, but it's how do you get all these assets uh, back together? And we at Philips believe that there's uh, the openness is really the, the key enabler to do this. And it's not just openness at, at one level, but it's openness at different levels to enable cities to become smart. 
And the, the way we see the world here is, uh, is really when you look at the asset level, um, you know, it's, it's other verticals that, that have their own assets distributed. They can also use the street light as, as one of the places to, to provide additional sensors and, and applications. Um, and it's about being able to retrofit assets. So there's no vendor lock-in. We can offer third-party luminaires uh, in our system uh, as well as retrofit existing luminaire infrastructures. And we can work with other verticals, uh, like for example, we're doing in, in smart poles with Ericsson where we provide connectivity to the citizens via the, the light pole. Also very important is, is the, the network component. You know, networking is a complex topic and uh, cities don't want to become network managers. Uh, they want to be able to use services um, based on these networks. And here, uh, Philips, we've, uh, we're working very closely with mobile operators, uh, for example, in our global partnership with Vodafone, where we leverage the, the investments made into ubiquitous public networks that enable us to offer to our end customers in fast deployment and managed networks that are in a license spectrum that are reliable and have a high degree of security. And they can also be used uh, by other verticals. So this is one area where we see a lot of potential to roll, roll out connected infrastructure faster and more reliably than, than in the past. And last but not least, the software level is a critical component where we see we can use connected lighting. We, we are the experts in, in the lighting domain, but there are many other domain experts uh, when it comes to different uh, vertical domains like security or, or traffic here in this example. And we're able to connect to these verticals at the software level. So by having standardized open APIs based on web services, we're able to provide the critical data that is important to link to other verticals and expose that to, to other departments and expose it to other systems so they can get a much broader view across verticals and manage assets and workflows across different departments. So this is uh, very important to us, uh, also shown a link uh, below uh, to an openness white paper that, that was written by Machina Research that kind of expands a little bit on, on the different level of openness that, that is required for smart cities. And for us at Philips, it is really important uh, that we, we work with strong partners at these different uh, asset levels, network levels and software levels and uh, with leading companies like SAP to enable cities to do more, to connect their lighting infrastructure today, also um, being able to connect their lighting infrastructure to other verticals uh, in the future as applications evolve and become smarter over time. So in summary, we, we really see smart cities representing a huge opportunity to create a lot of benefits for cities and for businesses and citizens. And we see that the only way to really reap these benefits are by investing in the right verticals and getting these verticals connected without creating a lot of complexity for city customers and enable them to explore and, 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 and reap the benefits. And if they're deployed in an open and smart way, uh, cities can evolve over time to, to reap even more benefits from these connected propositions. And we strongly believe that there's no company or city that can do it all uh, on their own. And uh, we're working with uh, many different partners, for example, like SAP in, in the uh, software space, where we we benefit from from their broad expertise in in creating software and uh, supplying cities with, with solutions that, that uh, help them grow over time. With this, I would like to hand over to Marlin Zalkovitz and uh, to talk about uh, SAP and how SAP views uh, the space and uh, some exciting examples that we've worked on together. Thank you.
Thank you, Andy. Um, I'm just going to take one quick moment while, while I'm joining you all. I'm delighted to be here this morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you may be in the world. I'm going to be uploading a video just right now that I'm going to show a little bit later. And uh, just taking one quick moment to do that because we've had some, uh, some difficulties technically this morning. Um, our city is smart, but sometimes our technology is just trying to catch up. So with that happening, I will just going to mention that we're looking here at a picture of the beautiful city of Barcelona, one of the smart cities in the world. And as Andy noted, we may have mentioned, we're going to be in Barcelona next week at the Smart City Expo World Congress. And we're holding this webinar today to talk about the importance of partnership in smart cities because, as Andy mentioned, there's many different areas and uh, cities aren't going to do it um, with just one partner alone. They're going to work with an open ecosystem, we believe. With that said, I'd like to talk to you about the trends that are happening in the world in technology and, and for cities and public sector and then go a little bit into some specific examples of why, you know, what our point of view is around smart cities. So we're talking right now about tremendous changes in the world, not just on the political level, but actually increasingly in our personal lives, at work, where we live. We're using more and more devices, more and more sensors. We're connected digitally. We're using the internet. It could be anything from a Fitbit that you're using to track your own personal activity. It could be an Alexa device that you have in your home that you're using to order parts or supplies or replacements or that you're using to play music and entertain you. It could be that you're sharing information or stories in social media, news, with this happens. All of this is really, really, um, really, really critical. And we're, we're seeing that all of this is creating an explosion of data, an explosion of information that we can use in many different ways. We're also moving from this world of only physical things to physical things that are connected digitally and that are controlled. And they, some of them are being controlled automatically, being managed, and others are being controlled actually um, through artificial and cognitive intelligence. So this is you know, what's happening in the world. We're talking about increased um, business networks, about 2 billion people on social networks. We're looking at you know, 9 billion mobile users, and increasingly people are expecting to interact with government with their mobile devices or in the manner that they choose and see fit. So with all of these changes that are happening in the world, we kind of wanted to share with you our point of view of what is happening in cities. So with the globalization and urbanization, which is putting uh, businesses and governments under pressure, and massive urbanization. More and more people are living in cities. We're seeing, as of 2014, about 54% of the world's 2.5 billion population is living in cities. And it's projected to grow to about 66% by the year 2050. So with this increasing urbanization, we also have increasingly digitally experienced citizens who are demanding to interact with governments and cities in the way that they interact with uh, with Amazon.com or or, um, what, or Zing or any of the different applications that they're using online. Uh, they're going to be expecting to bank and do services, get licenses and permits. They're also very conscious of safety and security, whether it's um, incidents caused by um, these tremendous climatic changes that we've seen um, with extreme weather conditions, storms and, and surges and floods, or whether it's um, whether it's incidents caused by uh, groups of people who are um, who are unfortunately unleashing, unleashing actions on it, other citizens, or it could be just trying to manage large sporting events or political events. These are some of the major changes that really need to be addressed. So the, with that, we're seeing technology combined with this, this hyper-connectivity I previously mentioned, the use of cloud computing, and then also with all these devices, we're seeing concerns about privacy and security. Um, not just who has access to your data, but also what's happening with your different accounts. So these are some important trends. And when you kind of bundle that together, you bundle that into issues around um, how do we make our cities more resilient? 
How do we make them more prosperous and more livable? These are the kinds of things. So the priorities that we're seeing for cities are around digitizing their services, services both in terms of to the citizens, as well as the, the physical infrastructure of the city, uh, the transportation and mobility getting around the city, and also increasingly with public safety and security. So that's kind of where we see cities heading these days from an FAP perspective. So we wanted to take a moment here, a show of hands, we'd like to have a poll. What type of smart city projects are you working on today? And I'll invite our poller to put the polling questions up and give a minute or so for folks to respond. We're hoping people are online and are going to answer the questions. Given that we're here in a, in a lighting webinar, we expect that there are probably going to be quite a few people who are interested in smart lighting. See now, we have the second polling question. We were hoping that you could tell us how important do you think partnerships are for smart cities? Okay. So, from that, we thought we'd share with you some of the representative smart city functions. Talking about partnerships and smart cities, if you look at this page, we, what this page is drawn from this paper that you've seen before. You've seen this um, mentioned by Andy earlier today, the openness, smart city is open by Machina Research. Representative smart city functions are across all the different silos, all the different vertical areas in the city. It's everything from um, waste management to traffic and transportation, parking, street lighting, water. It's everything from mobility. Um, it, it also involves the, you need to have the connectivity to bring all these things together. So that would be your net, that would be your network. That could be your telecom company, it could be your Wi-Fi by your mobile provider. You need to be thinking about also all the different functions that you have. So you might have video feeds, which would have lots of data. You might have sensors for air quality. You might have water management. You might have other kinds of solutions. What you have are lots of different pieces of information in a smart city. One of the things that we've noticed with all of these smart city functions is that many cities are indeed forming a group to get this whole group of people together to work on, on smart city programs, sponsored or supported by the mayor's office typically, and they work across to implement these functions. They decide which are the most important priorities. Often smart lighting is a very early priority because of the very positive uh, return on investment and the ability to use the light post for multiple purposes. You don't need to just have a, a light, you can also have sensors in your light that may be um, monitoring the air quality that could, could be also um, including some Wi-Fi hotspots that would be available. It could be also um, electronic vehicle charging posts. Um, there are many different ways to do this. But one of the things you also recognize with a smart city is you want to be able to have an integrated view, you, at least what we find in our customer base. They want to see not just what's happening in my light, so my light's in one dashboard and my um, water and waste management system is in another dashboard. They'd like to be able to bring those pieces together. So what we have done is we um, we have customers who pull together an integrated view, which allows them to bring together data and information from multiple sources, demonstrate that spatially, and be able to also keeping track of that information over time, monitor that, 
monitor the performance, whether it's of your, in the case of smart lighting, where are my lights, how are they performing over time, so that we can not just know when we need to maintain them based on a time schedule, but move into a more of a predictive maintenance kind of a mode. So we know that based on the performance of this light in a particular area in the city, that we need to go in and maintain it, we need to replace the, the luminaire, we need to um, we need to make adjustments because of certain conditions that may exist. It may also give us information about other problems that we have in the city. For example, we may be able to bring together information about the lighting in the city and then the crime patterns in the city. We may notice that there are certain parts where, there, where, the, where there's better lighting, where we have lower crime rate, and can we do things, or that we have higher crime at certain times of day, and we want to make, to Andy's point earlier, an adjustment to some of the lighting um, in order to be able to reduce crime or better um, promote a safer neighborhood and environment. So there's a lot of different things that we can do. And what we wanted to do is I wanted to, to show you an example of a, of a shared customer that we have in the city of Buenos Aires in Argentina. Uh, they're a customer who has implemented smart lighting. They're using this Philips uh, City Touch platform. And what you're looking here on the, on the right side is an example of their dashboard which is bringing together information, showing you a map, so where are the different lights or the different assets on in the city, and then showing what's happening with them. And then they have uh, some coding as to whether or not things are performing, where they have like, an issue, where they might need to open a service ticket. So they're tagging all their assets, they're managing them all in the system, and then they're able to, um, if they identify an incident, they're able to create a work order to send out, um, oftentimes it's a third party contractor to go and maintain that. Then they can, when the work has been done, they can check that the work has been done and send out an inspector to inspect the work. Um, this may be managed on a mobile device so that the mobile um, in the inspector receives their, their inspection on a mobile device, can say yes, indeed the inspection was done, check that off and then send that back to make sure that the contractor gets paid and then they can close their service ticket and they might even, you know, notify a citizen that the work has been done after that. So it's a really interesting story, and I'm going to try to run a video now and keep my fingers crossed that this works well for you all. So um, here we go. La luz permite ver. Light allows us to see. In that sense, light allows us to know. And when one has knowledge of situations, one feels calmer and safer. One of our goals as a city is to become a green city, a sustainable city. And converting public lighting in the city of Buenos Aires to LED technology allows us to reduce energy consumption considerably, deliver a more efficient lighting service, and reduce maintenance costs. First thing we did was to replace 91,000 lights. Todo el proyecto de recambio LED se llevó adelante. The LED replacement project was carried out by logging the work plans into SAP ERP. Eso nos permite tener control. This gives us control over the remaining stock, lets us know what the installation speed is, and allows us to get the contractor's paperwork in a timely manner. Every light has an antenna that communicates with the central system. SAP HANA is integrated to this central system so we can link the public lighting telemanagement system to work orders and dashboards in SAP. This means we have improved control over public lighting and maintenance operations. We also have a better idea of what's going on whenever there's a power outage, vandalism, or one of the lights breaks. Resident satisfaction with public lighting has improved considerably. The city is cleaner. The city is brighter, which I think is much better than several years ago. Having peace of mind or knowing that one has contributed to a better lighted city motivates us to continue working to improve people's lives. SAP helps the city of Buenos Aires run simply.
but I think it's a really powerful story because you hear them saying, you know, we're managing the assets, we are integrating our system, we're looking at um, making the city's citizens' lives better. It's really all about the outcomes, and I'm going to draw, draw to that point, but I wanted to also share a little bit more information about some of the things happening in Argentina. So one of the things that the city does is that they monitor their social media. And if they get a link, um, if they see a complaint on Twitter about something happening in the city or a complaint on Facebook, say it's a, it's a street light that's out or a tree that's down, they can actually take that and use that to uh, open this, a service ticket. And they can then go and, and better maintain the asset. So that's really being a smart city. They can also I, use the uh, capabilities, the analytical capabilities that they have within their um, within their own technology and monitor the social media and try to get a sense of the sentiment in the city. And then if they choose, they will then say, oh, we would like to understand a particular issue we're hearing about in a neighborhood. We were, and they have pulled together a on-the-spot poll, and they might use a, a, a free tool available, a survey monkey or something, to dive deeper and understand what that issue is. So that's just being a really small our city and it's bringing together different pieces of um, different pieces of information and data from multiple sources, including the citizens themselves, and, and applying that to bring about better outcomes for the city. I, I think that's a really um, powerful statement. And you know, this this particular project started back in uh, I think it was back in 2014. And what's interesting is that the city of Buenos Aires, the mayor, ended up uh, Riding his success to be elected the president of the Republic of Argentina. So it really shows that you can become a smart city and use that uh, also to become a smart nation. And I talked a lot about really, it's about outcomes. If we're talking about being a, um, using the Internet of Things, the sensors and devices, it's not about being smart to be smart. It's about making the, making your city run better. It's about trying to glean in sites from multiple sources of information, which may include different kinds of um, data and also may include information that is coming from sources such as video streams or, or, um, or other kinds of um, unstructured data and social media. And you use that to clean insights and to be able to pull together, for example, incident reports from, the, from your police and public safety, citizen complaints from your citizen services fire incident reports, um, any kind of information on your city, and to see, or even it could be maybe health data, and maybe you find that um, in a particular neighborhood, there aren't adequate services so that you're having a, a much higher incident of, of problems from that neighborhood because um, you notice that people are complaining about the, uh, about the quality of the properties, they're not being properly managed, and the, yet the city hasn't been able to get the property owners to do that work. Therefore, crime is up in the city. And so suddenly, if you bring this information together and you start, you find out that it's only a few property owners, you can then go and approach them and try to put in place a program to improve those properties, which might bring about better safety in a neighborhood. So that's really the, the idea of taking the insights from data and information and turn Bring that into outcomes. And then if you're a city, you might take some of that information and program that into your budget for the following year so that you can say, we would like to address these particular areas, these particular um, challenges, and we're trying to, you know, to do this. Now that, which brings to mind a story that we have uh, from a customer of ours who's the state. And uh, I think that while we're talking today about smart cities, it's important to know that regional governments are also putting in place these kinds of smart initiatives. You know, Many times on roads in, uh, in, in areas, there will be smart lighting. Um, there will be lighting. If you can smartify that lighting, you might be able to have both an improved outcome in terms of the uh, number of traffic accidents on that rural road, and you might also be able to have a, a, a cost savings by not having to light unnecessarily. You might have motion sensors to cause the lights to come on and, and operate when there are cars or trucks going down the road, but then they go off. So all of that is to say that these kinds of smart city projects and smart lighting projects and, and transportation, not only are they relevant for cities, but they're relevant for regional and local and urban government to drive better outcomes. And I just, um, 
I don't know if you're seeing that in your area, but I uh, would love to love to hear what what's happening, and we hope that you'll ask us some questions in the course of this um, in the course of the remaining time left. And I um, trying to move my slide over and get to our question and answer period. There we go. So here at SAP, what we're seeing is that the public sector organizations are starting to really reimagine the way they do business, um, really having to deal with um, scaling and scaling to use what they need when they need it, but then not necessarily using it all the time, um, making the government more tailored, the public sector city services tailored more for the city's citizens and the businesses in them, and increasingly being um, digital by default and trying to really make informed decisions, taking information from wearables, from all different kinds of devices, sensors, from lights, from smart light poles, whatever, and to improve people's lives for better outcomes. That's, that's kind of our point of view, and you know, we hope we've showed you an example here.